This is an encore of Distro Delves episode 13, where we're going to be taking a quick second look at Zorin OS 15.2, this time looking at the light variety. The reason why we're doing an encore episode for Zorin OS is because Zorin Core had just a ton of issues, and several of the major issues I felt were due to GNOME. Zorin Lite uses XFCE 4.14 while retaining the same Zorin OS charm, and also many of you suggested I look at Zorin Lite in the comments of the original episode, so here we are. Since this is an Encore episode and we've already seen the Zorin OS installer, let's just jump straight over the login screen and the still non-existent welcome app and check out the system resources. DF is telling us that a fresh Zorin Lite install is... Oh, wait a second, does that say 8.8 .8 gigabytes? How? Zorin Core was only 8.6 gigabytes. How does Zorin Lite have a larger install size? And Free is telling us that Zorin Lite is using 723 megabytes, which feels a little chunky for an XFCE distro, but that's okay. And HTOP is saying that we've got 89 tasks and 137 threads. Now Zorin Lite looks and feels practically the same as Zorin Core. I can't say that it felt faster than Zorin Core, despite using XFCE over GNOME. The Appearance app is here, and it didn't crash on me, which is always nice. It appears to have all of the same functionality as the one in Zorin Core, and of course, all of the themes look great. The backgrounds are still lame though. To make this video look a bit different than the previous one, I chose a different background, and I think this one looks better anyway. Now I was expecting more XFCE default apps, but it seems that there is a mix of XFCE and GNOME apps going on. I also noticed that Pitivy, which is the GNOME video editor, is installed by default, and it uses its own theme. Typical for some GNOME apps, it totally clashes with the beautiful theme that Zorin's got going on. And I can't really say which default app selection I like better. I'm partial to some XFCE apps, but then again there are a number of GNOME apps mixed in, so it's not a pure XFCE distro. Jumping over to the archive test, the 7-zip file opened in the archive manager, instead of just extracting it like in Zorin Core. So, hey, that's one bug fixed. And for the audio files, all of them opened in a single media player, Parole. So that's cool. The video files were all fine except for the WebM file, which opened in Firefox, which kind of makes sense because WebM files are web media format, like WebM, get it? The third-party app stuff was about the same as it was on Zorn Core. App images were fine, but flat packs were dodgy. The software center didn't want to have anything to do with that flat ref file. In fact, I think that I'd call the whole of the software center just a mess. I don't know why, but it feels really unreliable, just like unstable. Sometimes it says there's updates, other times it says apps are installed when they aren't, and then suddenly it like throws errors and stuff. So the snap version of OBS, which by the way is the default recommended version from the software center, had the same issue as on Zorn Core. A commenter or two said that maybe the folder was hidden, but that didn't seem right because the folder name didn't have a period in front of it. Turns out, the folder was hidden somehow, and it reveals itself when you tell the file manager to show hidden files. In my opinion, this is an unacceptable bug with either Snap or the file manager. Why the hell can't OBS just save files to the video folder? Or why does the Snap folder, why is it hidden? Or why does it exist? Or like, why is it set up this way? What does the end user gain by using this configuration? It's just bizarre. And unlike Zorin Core, there isn't an easy way to share folders through Samba, like with the little context menu thing. So Samba sharing is out of the question. And there wasn't anything different about file or folder sharing, so let's just jump to the next segment which is printers, and funnily enough, it worked just fine. I was able to search for printers in the start menu and see that my printer was detected and connected without any drama or anything. Bluetooth was a mess. After arguing with the Bluetooth manager, I got the controller to connect, but then it disconnected, and then Bluetooth just up and crashed. I rebooted, reconnected everything, and as soon as I got into a game, it crashed again. So maybe you guys have a different experience with Bluetooth, but from my experience, the previous video and this one, Bluetooth is completely broken on Zorin OS. Like, I couldn't get the DualShock controller to work at all. For the gaming segment, I thought it might be interesting to compare the lightweight version of Zorin to the regular core version to see if there are any performance gains or losses. And would you have guessed it? There didn't seem to be any differences at all. The GTA benchmark pulled about 12 frames a second, just like Zorin Core, and the gameplay was as sluggish as ever. The Mad Max benchmark was, again, the same as Zorin Core coming in at just about 28 frames a second. And for the Geekbench stuff, I also thought it might be fun to compare Zorin Core to Zorin Lite, and to no surprise, the differences were negligible. 
The desktop environment doesn't really add much overhead to the operating system in terms of raw computing power, so we shouldn't really expect to see much of a difference in synthetic tests like these. So did Zorin Lite do better than Zorin Core? Not really. I feel like Zorin Lite fixes a couple of bugs from Zorin Core, but not all of them, and to be quite honest, a distro based on Ubuntu LTS shouldn't ship with these bugs at all. Like the Bluetooth bug. What the hell is even going on there? How could Bluetooth work on Ubuntu proper, but not a derivative of it? Like, what changed? Now, I don't know if I would say that Zorin Lite is better than Zorin Core. If you absolutely had to use one of them, I'd probably opt for Zorin Lite, but to be honest, neither of them are particularly impressive. Especially when considering just how much competition there is in the realm of Ubuntu-based Linux distros. I think all I can say is, eh. I hope that you enjoyed this episode of Distro Delves. If you want to contribute to the series or submit a new distro to review or whatever, you can hop on over the Distro Delves repo and check it out, submit an issue, whatever. If you want to support me and the channel, you can become a patron and enjoy posts about behind the scenes stuff, history about the channel, links to playlists for old archive videos and other fun stuff. I appreciate all your support and thanks for watching.